Did you know you can emulate the same film stock used in blockbuster movies like Oppenheimer, Interstellar, and The Dark Knight completely for free? In this video, I'll be teaching you guys how I color grade using the Kodak 2383 film emulation LED in DaVinci Resolve. But before we get into DaVinci, what is Kodak 2383 and why do Hollywood directors love it so much? Kodak Vision 2383 is a color print film stock known for its rich blacks, neutral highlights, color separation, and color density. It's because of these characteristics that this is the film stock used by some of the most famous directors in the world, including Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino, and Denny Villeneuve, just to name a few. But sometimes they don't shoot straight to the film stock. That can get very expensive very quickly. What they'll do is either shoot the entire thing on digital or a negative film stock, color grade, and edit the footage, and then print it back onto the Kodak 2383 film stock to get the desired look. But how can they color grade without knowing how the film is gonna affect the image? They use this slut. This slut was created to emulate how the film will react when an image is applied to it, and that's exactly how we're gonna use it too. So this is part two of my color grading series. Part one showed how I corrected from a log picture profile, so if you haven't seen that yet, definitely go check that out. So jumping right into DaVinci, I have a little timeline set up. We have two clips here, each with their own individual adjustment clip on top of them, and they've both been color corrected from either log or semi-log picture profile. So we're gonna start with a trick that I actually learned from Donna Did It. We're gonna add both of these adjustment layers into a group, which is kind of like an adjustment layer for your adjustment layer. For example, we have these two adjustment clips here with their own individual corrections applied. And say you wanted to color grade them exactly the same because they're in the same video, you put both of the adjustment clips in the same group and then the group has an overall grade applied to it. Let me just show you. It's kind of weird to explain, but let's just get into it. So jumping into the color tab, we can select both of our adjustment clips and right click and then go up into add a new group. And then I'm gonna name this grade. And then as you can see up here on the top right, we went from having two dots to having four. This is where we can swap between our local correction on the adjustment layer and the group grade that we're about to create. So the adjustment layer is gonna be the second dot from the left that's called clip. And the one that we're gonna be working in today is the one just next to it called group post clip. And right now it's just a blank node tree, but if we add something to it, like for example, bringing up the brightness, you can see it affects both the clip on the left and the clip on the right. So this is the space that we're gonna be working in. So we're gonna be using six nodes for this grade. So all S, 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 S. And same thing as last time, we're gonna label them. The first one is gonna be CST. The second is gonna be LUT. Third is tone. Fourth is density. Fifth is clarity and six is blur. These nodes don't all have to be separate. I just like to do it that way because I like the modularity. But if you want to put together tone and clarity, you definitely can. And unlike my correction process, we're gonna go through each of these in order. So starting with CST and LUT, we're actually gonna create what's known as a compound node. So what we're gonna do is click our CST and then drag and select our LUT as well. Right click on CST and go down to create compound node. And then you should have an, a new node with some layers behind it called compound. So what we're gonna do is command double click or control double click and it'll put us inside of the compound node where our two original nodes are. And in the first node, we're gonna add a color space transform. The reason for this is because the LUT that we're gonna be working with was created to work in a specific color space and we need to transform our footage into that color space before we can apply the LUT or else it's gonna look really weird. So to do that, we're gonna come up to effects, go to the search and just type in color and we can drag in our color space transform. For input color space, I always just put Rec 709. Input gamma, I usually like to do gamma 2.4. Output color space is gonna be Rec 709 as well. And then the important part is the output gamma, which needs to be Cineon Film Log. So it's gonna make our footage look pretty washed out, but once we apply the LUT, it'll look great. So to do that, we're gonna right click on the LUT node, go down to LUT, and then go into Film Looks. And within Film Looks, we're gonna use one of these three down at the bottom, the Kodak 2383. I usually just do D60. The difference between D55, D60, and D65 is just the warmth of the film that we're trying to emulate. So I just pick the one in the middle. Now, sometimes when you apply these two LUTs, it can look a bit strong. So the reason we put it into a compound node is so that we can get out of here and right click exit compound node. And with the compound node selected, we can go into our game and turn down how much of that LUT is applied to your footage. I usually leave it somewhere 0.8 to one. Just for the sake of this video, we'll keep it at one. And there you have your Kodak 2383 film emulation pretty much done already. The picture looks great. It's not washed out. It has vibrant colors, good contrast. You could do this and pretty much be done after two nodes. But I like to do a little bit more just to add my own little touch to it. Hey! Hey! They didn't hear me. <laughs> 
Next up is the tone node, which is just short for split tone. The LUT that we just used has split toning built into it. There's a little bit of yellow in the highlights and blue in the shadows. But I tend to either like to put a little bit of green in the highlights or just warm up the midtones. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I usually go into the gamma wheels and just drag it a little bit over to the orange side. Just gives it a little bit of warmth. But this is all personal preference, just extra on top of the, the LUT. So whatever you think looks good. The next note is density, which is short for color density. As mentioned earlier, the color density is one of the characteristics that people look for in this specific film stock. So this is just a little bit of extra on top of that. Maybe you turn down the gain because you didn't want as much of the blue and yellow tint, but you still want that deep, rich saturation. This is the light that we can add that back in. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna click density, right click, go down to color space, and we're gonna change it to HSV. HSV stands for hue, saturation, and value. It's kind of like the HSL sliders in Lightroom. But for this, we're going to isolate just the saturation channel. So to do that, we're gonna right click, go down to channels and deselect channel one and channel three. So we're just left with channel two, which is saturation. Now pretty much how I learned this is gain is gonna affect the more saturated parts of the image, while gamma is gonna affect the less saturated parts of the image. Don't touch lift lift screws everything up. So I usually like to drop the midtones to something like minus 0.01 and then I bring the gain up to 1.05 ish. But again, if you want a more saturated image, by all means, crank it. Honestly, let's put it up to like 10 just to really get a better idea. Okay, we're at 11, boom. You can see in my face, the orange just gets a little bit deeper, a little darker, a little richer. Same with the greens up in the trees. It looks nice. Next, we have the clarity node. There's no clarity slider in DaVinci. They have the midtone detail slider, pretty much the same thing. So what I like to do is just bring the midtone detail down to something like minus 25-ish. And it just gives it a little bit softer of a feel, a little bit more glowy highlights, cinematic highlights, things like that. And then the last node is the blur node. For this, I go up into effects and just type in film damage, drag it in, I turn everything else off. We don't want any dirt, we don't want any vignetting. I mean, you can put vignetting, I don't want any vignetting. Like, you don't want any temperature shift, tint shift, just blur. I usually just put it at something like 0.05, just to take the edge off of it, give it a little bit more of a filmic look, and going back doing a little before and after, very subtle. It's really not necessary, but I like it. Wow. The final two steps of my color grading process actually don't happen in the color tab. The first one is the black bars that you see on all cinematic content, whether it be the four x five bars or the 235 by one bars. Making the aspect ratio four x three gives a really nice vintage feel, while the 235 by one is more of a Michael Bay Transformers cinematic slow motion type of thing. I normally use these bars to accentuate the differences between A roll and B roll, you can use them however you would like. To do this, I'm gonna click the adjustment clip, go into the Fusion tab, click this box, and come over here to the width and height settings. If you want four by three, you're gonna do the height as one and the width as 0.75, and vice versa if you want the 235 by one bars. So for this one, I'll just leave it as the four by three, and we go back to our scene, and obviously we have the four by three bars. Now if you wanna do a different one, we can go to this adjustment clip, same thing, go in here, square, rectangle, put your width up to one, and then your height up to 0.75. And the last step of everything is to add film grain. Again, I'm working in the free version of DaVinci, so I do not have the grain plugin, but I have the next best thing, which is a 35 millimeter grain overlay. So I've actually already added the grain to our media pool. I'm just gonna drag and drop it, unlink this, delete the audio, and put this on top of both of our clips. We can go to the composite mode and scroll down until we see overlay. And then obviously you can change the opacity depending on how much grain you want. I usually put it at something like 60. And that's it. If you want a full before and after, you go Shift D. So here's our ungraded, uncorrected footage. And there's our fully graded, fully corrected footage. And now to the next one, same thing. S-Log2, completely ungraded, uncorrected, to fully corrected and fully graded footage. And there you have it, my full color grading process using the Kodak 2383 emulation LUT inside of DaVinci Resolve. This entire process can be done using the completely free version of DaVinci Resolve, and I think the results are amazing. I have this entire node tree saved as a power grade, and I use it on pretty much every video that I post to this channel. 
As I said before, definitely check out part one of this video series so you know how to correct your footage from a log profile. And let me know what you guys think of this workflow in the comments below. If you have any suggestions, please send them my way. I'm always trying to learn the best and most efficient ways to do things. And I do this a lot, so it could save me a lot of time. If you've enjoyed or you found this video helpful, please drop a like, it really helps the channel. And subscribe for more content in the very near future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.